Welcome. Now we're going to take a look at status codes. Initially, the status codes are set up when the PrintViz rapid start process is conducted in order to get your company up and running in PrintViz Business Central. Status codes, if we go to our case management list, play in and show us where the case is throughout our production environment. It also establishes whether the case is a request, a quote, an order, or a production order. Each status code is assigned to a case and is moved through the plant either manually or by using the shop floor interface. To take a look at status codes in our search, we search for status codes. And we select print viz status codes from our menu. This creates a list of all the status codes we have set up in our system. These status codes can be as high level or as granular as your production environment requires. If you need to know for your finishing equipment, for instance, when a job is on each piece of finishing equipment, you can set up a status code for each cost center. In this case, our system is set up with basic status codes for each department. To look at a status code, you click on the code for that item and it brings up our status code sheet. If there are any setup instructions, those are on the right side of the screen, or you can hide the information panel. On the status code, there are several tabs, the first being the general tab. The general tab contains our code, the text or the name for that code, the description, any deadline period. This is how long a job or a case should sit in that status code. For instance, if we put in 1D, that would be that it should only be in the status code for one day. This comes in handy for things like proofing status, quoting, shipping, job costing, invoicing, and things like that. In the case that a deadline is set, the system will update and mark that job as past due on that status if it has been past the deadline period that is set. The next status specifies which status code it moves to after this status. In this case, it moves from printing to our finishing department. The sorting order determines which order it is in the list. Priority. Priority is used to set a status for filtering and sorting on our case management list. The style expression, we can set this style as a a favorable, a standard, set it to attention or unfavorable in the case that we want to view these status codes. If we take a look at our uh, case management list, you'll notice that some there are in green for order, uh, others may be red for canceled or not approved. Show in case management, this specifies whether this status code will show in our case management list if we want to view cases with a particular status. Show in production plan, this determines whether or not this status will be shown on the production plan via the shop floor. Editable, whether or not this status code can be edited. This comes in handy when we need to edit a case. If we want to be able to edit a case, we can set it to yes. If we, do, if we want to limit editing cases, we set it to no, and then we can change it to where it is only available for planning, meaning you cannot change that case. And then the system status. The system status specifies whether it is a request, a quote, an order, or a production order. If the job is a request, there is no quote number or order number created. When the status code is set to quote, it will create a quote number for that status or for that case. When the job is set to, or when the status is set to order, that is when a uh, order number gets created for that job. And if it's a production order, a production order line is created on that case for that job. We'll talk more about production orders in another video. Under the flow tab, we have the ability to decide how the job is handled through that status. At this point, it is set for no material ability. We can set it to allow to reserve material not reserve material or there's no change. We can set it to where the job can be invoiced or not. Generally, you want to have any job that has passed the planning stage set to be invoiced um, in the case of doing pre-invoices and other issues like that or partial 
prepayment invoices. Production ended. Usually this is saved for statuses where there is no more production, such as a shipping or a job costing status. The job can be planned. This limits whether or not the job is available to show up on the production plan and will populate items on that production plan. You'll notice that in this dropdown, we have three options. No change, yes, or no. No change takes the option from the status before the current status. Yes obviously sets it to yes and no sets it to no. Proof approved, whether the proof has been approved yes or no. Job costing may be registered. This is important for shop floor use. Any status code where job costing may be registered is set to no. Job costing cannot be entered into the system. There may be instances where you have a quote level status set to yes. In the case where pre-press or your pre-flight department has to do a little bit of work beforehand to determine specifics and you want to capture those costs. The job to be archived. This setting tells the system that the job can be archived or should be archived or not. Generally, this is saved for canceled or rejected quotes and jobs and jobs that have been invoiced. Allow raw material picking. This allows material to be used and charged against the job in shop floor and whether or not the job is canceled. Under the next tab, flow data, we can determine the department as well as the cost center for this status code. In our case, we could select the printing department for this status code as this is the print status. We wouldn't necessarily select a cost center as this uh, status code could incorporate our multiple cost centers our sheet offset, our web offset, and our digital press. Auto job costing determines whether or not material will be auto costed, meaning that your operators are not doing the job costing through shop floor, but the system automatically does it based on the estimate. This also requires some additional setup in the unit of measure for those items and create sales invoice. We can set the system to where if the first invoice is posted on the production order, the orders move to this status code. Version management, this allows us to specify which versions can be modified at this point in our production. Currently, you'll notice that request cannot be modified. However, quote, order, production order can, providing they're the active version. If we turn off edit active version only, you could edit any version in your case. This comes in handy in the case of using production orders and you want to prevent people from editing the original quote or the original order. You can leave just the production order as editable. And again, we'll cover that more in depth when we talk about production orders. The integration tab is used for sales order integration when we're taking orders from web storefronts or for JDF or purchase integration, as well as whether or not we create our folders at this point in time. We'll take a look at our quote level status code and our order level status code to see how folders are created. And we'll talk more about folders at a later video as well. System status, the system status sets the order determines how the order is ready, whether it is a default quoted or ready for a quote. Uh, in this case, the status code is default ready for production and whether or not this status code is blocked. And then any requirements for the status, such as whether or not it needs to check the eco label code, the credit limit, to make sure that the salesperson or the coordinator have filled out that there's a delivery date or any other option. To take a look at some of the status codes that require certain things, for instance, under our planning, if we look at our requirement, we can see that there's a warning set for the delivery date. What this does is if there is no delivery date in the system under that job, it will, will prompt the user with a warning that no delivery date has been set. We can also change that to stop, meaning that if there is no delivery date on the job line, when it changes to the planning, it will not move the job to the planning status code. The same can be done for anything such as the eco label or the credit limit. This comes in handy when uh, the credit limit comes in handy when on the order status to prevent people from creating orders where the credit limit may be over. If we take a look at our order status, that is set to check the credit limit. We can set that to full stop meaning that it will not create the order when the credit limit is over. And you can see on our status code list, 
the emphasis. For instance, order and ready for shipping are both favorable. Archived is set to ambiguous. If we wanted to, we could set our quote rejected to unfavorable. And now you'll notice that it is highlighted in red. It's just an easy way for us to view those jobs in those particular statuses. To create a new status code, all you have to do is click new and we can create our code. We simply go through and add our parts. We'll set our flow data to limit this to our digital printing cost center. And you'll notice that when I selected that cost center, it selected the department automatically for me, our version management. And that is all we need for our status code to be set. You'll notice that now our digital printing status code is in under pre-press and before our printing with a one day deadline period.